Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor. You know, next to melatonin, magnesium is one of the most popular sleep supplements anybody asks me about. In fact, it seems like everyone is constantly talking about magnesium. Magnesium. Or magnesium. On magnesium. So let's talk about why it's so important, what specifically you need to know to use it for sleep, and what it actually does. So first of all, what is magnesium? Believe it or not, it's an essential mineral in the body, and it's important for almost three hundred different enzymatic reactions. But remember, magnesium plays a key role in energy production by activating this stuff called ATP. ATP is kind of like gasoline for your body cells. It's the thing that fuels your body cells, so we want more ATP. It also helps muscles and nerves function properly, helps maintain your heart, aids in bone development and bone protection, and even functions as an electrolyte, maintaining fluid balance in your body. Even some of your stress responses can actually be affected by magnesium. Now, when we say magnesium, we need to be clear. There are 11 different kinds of magnesium out there. The two that you've probably got the most familiarity with is magnesium citrate and magnesium glycinate. Remember, magnesium citrate, easy to absorb, helps reduce GI symptoms. Magnesium glycinate, also easy to absorb, helps with digestion and constipation. Remember, your body doesn't produce magnesium. It has to come through your diet. You got to eat it. And to be fair, it's not so easy to find. I mean, yes, it's easy to find in certain foods. Foods such as nuts, seeds, whole grains, wheat. Leafy greens is a big one. Dark chocolate for you dark chocolate fans. But our soil has been over tilled. And so magnesium isn't coming up through the root stalks anymore. And so in many cases, people are going to have to supplement, even if they're having all of these great things in their diet. By the way, I've got plenty more information about all the vitamins and minerals you're going to need to get some of your highest quality sleep on my YouTube channel. Do me a favor, swing on over there and subscribe because we, we put stuff out about twice a week and I think that can be really helpful for you. I want to be super clear, there's no magic bullet with sleep. Magnesium is not that. But here are some ways that magnesium can help you specifically with sleep. Number one, it helps calm your central nervous system. Number two, it will help relax your muscles. Number three, it increases GABA and lowers your core body temperature. So what it does is it creates relaxing conditions for sleep or a great sleep environment inside your body to allow for sleep. But also magnesium can be associated with specific sleep disorders. For example, insomnia. A very common symptom of insomnia are people with a magnesium deficiency, especially in people who are a little bit older. People with low magnesium often experience very restless sleep where they'll wake up throughout the night. Remember, magnesium supports deep restorative sleep. So it maintains healthy levels of GABA, those breaks of the brain. But to be very, very clear, research is still unclear. But a study of older adults who took 500 milligrams of magnesium daily found they fell asleep faster, they stayed asleep longer, and they had reduced awakenings, and it increased their levels of naturally circulating melatonin. These are all pretty good things. So as a general guideline, I'm constantly recommending to my patients, get your magnesium tested, figure out if you're low, and get some extra magnesium. Now, there's another area besides insomnia, which is restless leg syndrome. There are now some research to indicate that a magnesium deficiency could actually be the cause of some of these. Now, I want to be uh, fair. This hasn't been established in the general population. There has been a link found in pregnant women or people who are on dialysis. With that being said, we know that almost a third of people out there have a magnesium deficiency. Some people actually have a higher risk for said deficiency. So if you've got type 2 diabetes, if you have a high intake of alcohol, any gastrointestinal issues like Crohn's disease or celiac, or you just don't eat foods that are rich in magnesium, a simple blood test can show if you've been experiencing magnesium deficiencies, and I would recommend you do one at least once a year. General guidelines, experts recommend taking somewhere between 100 and 350 milligrams daily. Start with the lowest dose and gradually increase. Otherwise, you could end up with an upset stomach or significant diarrhea. High magnesium levels can lead to diarrhea and stomach pain. So again, start low and then slowly increase. But take your supplements carefully and please ask your doctor, especially consult with your doctor if you're breastfeeding, if you have any type of blood or bleeding disorder, heart block, or suffer from kidney problems because magnesium can affect some of those medications and some of those situations. I want to give you a clinical example of somebody that I worked with and uh, they wanted a sleep supplement. I rarely just you know, recommend a sleep supplement. We like to do blood work with their physician to see are there any deficiencies. So we did the blood work and guess what? She had a magnesium deficiency. 
So I started her on magnesium glycinate. Now, a lot of people say, well, why glycinate first? It's very easy on the stomach. And so for folks who maybe have not taken magnesium before, or even with the smallest dose, they have a big reaction. I put them on magnesium glycinate at the lowest dose. Once we got her established there, we found that it was helpful, but we felt like it could be more helpful because she still ended up having some level of digestion issues and constipation. So I moved her to magnesium citrate. Once her body got adjusted to that, I moved her to magnesium, a combination actually of magnesium threonate and magnesium citrate. Now why threonate? Remember, it crosses the blood-brain barrier, it's absorbed quickly, and it can help with memory and REM sleep. So the next question that this person had is, when do I take my magnesium? To be honest with you, this is a personal preference level in most cases. I personally take my magnesium in my smoothie every morning, and it doesn't affect me or make me feel tired during the day. Many people prefer magnesium at night as part of a ritual. You can do it any way you want, but what you wanna key in on is making sure that it is not either making you have to get up and go to the bathroom or having, having an upset stomach. So at the end of it all, magnesium is an essential mineral that's key with helping your body run well, sleeping, and waking. But it's only one. Vitamin B6 and vitamin B12 are two really important vitamins that help fight off feelings of sluggishness throughout the day and give you more energy. And a lot of people don't even think about the B vitamins. So do me a favor, swing on over and check out my video on all the B vitamins right here. I know it can be a struggle to get quality sleep at night, but often the solution is just making sure that we're eating healthy, well-balanced, rich diet in all these essential minerals and vitamins throughout the day. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, The Sleep Doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.